If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's so already says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. Uh, my partner in crime is no longer here. No, she's here. She's just checking up on stuff, doing the stretching or whatever needs to be done when you're into the third trimester of pregnancy. Um, this is going to be, we have some black metal for you. This is going to be Children of the Urn by the band Funeral Mist. Children of the Urn. Oh, I guess I lied to you. My partner in crime has returned. So this is Children of the Urn by the band Funeral Mist. Uh, this is gonna be good. Sorry for making her cry that much. <laughs> That's uh, alright. Well, I, I think I think the baby has a lot to do with that, but you know. I mean, the topic already makes me cry yeah. when I'm not pregnant. But, yeah. But yeah, don't worry about it. I think and, I, I'm very, very glad and very grateful that you brought that song to us. Yeah. To be honest with you, it's probably my favorite review of the year so far. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Yep. Funeral mist. All I mean, right, here we go. According to uh, 275 Ranger, that's a dude from Marduk, right? Shaw. Sure. Did you read it? Know. No. Go for it. Funeral Mist is a side product project of... No, read it, because when I come up the stairs, I'm out of breath. Funeral Mist is a side project of Mortis Ariok, better known for being the singer of the black metal band Marduk. There you go, 275. Among bands such as Offimrod, Despell Omega... Or the well-known uh, Vatane, Funeral Mist is part of the orthodox black metal current, focusing in theistic Satanism. Hmm. That's where you believe Satan like, so is a literal So that's believe being. you believe that he's a literal ontology, a literal uh, dynamic force in the world that you can uh, access and yeah. have uh, effects in the material world. Funeral Mist music is chaotic, violent, and abrasive. So don't expect many beautiful melodies, even if the song I've chosen is probably the catchiest of their last album, Deiform 2021. Get ready to be horrified. Excellent. Children of the... Uh, of sorry. the urn. Funeral mist. Children of the urn. Here we go. Here we are, dear listener. This should be interesting. Oh, let's do it. Literally. Holy smokes. Here we go.
<laughs> what, babe? I was actually able to follow the lyrics all the way through. Mm-hmm. I liked that. So I knew where we were at. What are you thinking? Well, wh what are you thinking? I mean, this style of music, you know, I've said it before, it's not really my thing. I did like the added children in it. They're singing. I didn't know what yeah, they were singing. Yeah, I wish I knew what the kids were singing. Mm -hmm. uh, JLB, do you know what those kids are singing? Because uh, that was that was a pretty crazy addition. I think that the way... So, there are a couple things going on with me when I was listening to this band. So, first of all... So, that's cool. But, what was interesting to me, the cadence was chaotic, a bit chaotic... But it wasn't as chaotic as I thought it was going to be. halfway into the into the bar they went in a completely different direction on meter and all that and and, and it definitely gives you this chaotic feel because you're like oh okay this is four four you know we're gonna settle into four four i know i know what the you know the cadence is gonna be and then it gets sped up like half way into the bar uh which is not something that um it would be a nightmare if we if i tried to write music that way with you it would be an absolute nightmare I bet. yeah it's because you have to be so perfect on on that cue like you have to speed up exactly on point and in time I, I don't know i just don't think uh, uh although would it really make a difference because i have a hard time knowing where i'm at anyway yeah but it would really be a problem oh gosh okay but my my point is i appreciated the hell out of that like a train in <laughs> like a train ready to derail yeah it completely, you know, derailed the, the rhythm. And what that makes you do, you either check out or it makes you perk up and listen closely because you don't know you don't know What's when this is gonna to... change on you again. So the sound um was really crazy to me. Lyrically, I thought this guy was a genius. I thought I thought lyrically there was I was chewing on a lot and I was having a lot of trouble because I was also enjoying the uh the instrumentation, yep. like what they were doing. I think yep. black metal really is is kind of my thing. Although the the most recent song we've written is probably would probably even be considered poppy. Once once you girls actually start writing and and, and recording vocals, um, but I, I just I just love like this one was was. Uh, you know, there's this band, Despel Omega, and they're really discordant, and they're really, like, off. There another band that we listened to is uh, Nis, I think it, they're called. Yeah. You bring uh, them up the, a lot. Yeah, Nis. I've been listening to Nis a lot. And if you listen to them, they're also discordant. But if you listen to these bands, and they're kind of avant-garde and, and, like, purposely discordant with the, with the, with their, with the notes mm -hmm. signatures as well as their progressions and time signatures, like... There is chaos, but there's still some order. It's kind of an amoeba shape type mm -hmm. situation. Like, it sounds chaotic, but it's still ordered if if you really sit and listen to it, especially if you do it multiple times. So, like this, like it's like oh, every time I listen to that 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 song, I always find some new thing with it because. Really? Yeah, because the thing, what happens with your brain, I think, is you know those optical illusions where like, oh, you're you're seeing something and your brain is just filling in the blank because it's looking for a pattern and it's seen the same thing a million times, mm -hmm. which, so it adds that extra thing in there. It's like, oh, you missed a spot, your brain will yeah. add it in. Like, that's what happens, I think. We've been trained in this certain kind of meter and pacing Mm -hmm. for the probably millions of hours that we've listened to songs. And so when you have a band like that that's discordant, your brain is like, oh, this is what's going to happen. 
So that's what you hear. But then you listen to it again and you don't hear the same oh. thing. Mm -hmm. Because now your brain has new, you know, and I'm saying brain, I don't even believe a brain exists, but that's a different dis discussion. But like, whatever, that's how you're taking it in and it's it's correcting something. Thanks, Amy. But that, and then when you listen to it again, it's like, oh, wait a second, no, that's not what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And you almost have to like, that's why I think I like bands like that because to me, they, they almost expand your consciousness because it, it breaks these... I don't want to say traditional because that's too light of a word, but it, it breaks the programming. Like when you listen to music, especially pop music, which we all kind of, that was the gateway. But even when you get into metal, the song structures are all very, very, very similar. Even if you have an underground song, like it's going to be 4-4 four, four, whatever. So when you have something that like is purposely transgressive of those rules and programming to me it makes you aware of the fact that you are aware that you're listening to music so like <laughs> that's one of the i don't think it works like that for everybody but that's yeah. that's well i think i think it does if you if you listen to the same song over and over again and then you hear something different every time mm -hmm. that's because you are being aware of the fact that you are aware of music mm. so like cash was talking about this like you know a dog sees a cloud just like you see a cloud but the dog doesn't know that it's seeing a cloud Right. Right. Whereas you say, I'm seeing a cloud and I know that I'm seeing a cloud. Yeah. I know I'm not that and mm -hmm. that's not me. And I'm aware that I'm aware of that. Okay. That's a different level of consciousness. You know, and, you know, that's cast up as kind of his grounding for, for his analytic idealist understanding of the universe. But like when you listen to music like this, like you're, you have to be conscious of the fact that you're consciously listening to music so that you can get what they're doing. Oh. And that's what I'm saying is like expansive to the... Oh. To the to stay really focused on it, to see like what, is there stuff that I like about it? Is there stuff I don't like about it? Um, so yeah, it does. It, yeah. yeah. of the urn lifeless song from the lifeless choir unavenged ghost begging to return as foreshadows of holy anger silhouettes of wrath divine i am the mouth of demonic hunger that that ages thirst for the poisoned wine the grave is feeding devouring inhaling whirls of life as monuments of stone and copper being raised along my spine the sound is cutting <clears throat> i mean i guess listening from there turn the volume off um, Are we good now, DJ? Yeah, sounds good now, I think. Okay. Well, well, well hold on, keep going. Good. Okay. Uh, okay, so what do you think the... Um, what do you think he was talking about? Well, here it where? sounded like the... There, there had been a bunch of kids that were killed, but then it was weird because he also sounded like he was talking about children that have died without ever being born, and that they're the only ones that are like like truly free because they were never born. Well, that's the that's the antinatalist idea. Is that existence itself is a prison, and not from like a Buddhist Nirvana goal type thing, but. The very idea that you could bring some being into existence is the ultimate violation of their freedom because they had no choice in the matter of whether or not to exist. Okay. So, as, especially if you believe in, um, if you combine that with a, a theistic Satanism, that would then mean, I assume, that that being would now have a soul that transcends the, the mortal coil and so now you've really condemned them pretty much to a life of some form of consciousness that you did not consult them with so the only free beings would be those who are never who were never born it's so weird how you can look at something from one point of view for so long that you can't even imagine that there's another one because like there was that girl that had put the post out it was for abortion but she was talking about in like according to her research or whatever i don't know enough about buddhist theology to really even know i'm pretty sure she was talking about buddhist theology and she was saying that over there 
that when you're going to have a child, if you decide that you're not ready to raise that child and you abort the child, it doesn't, nothing like, you're not doing anything bad because all you're doing is sending that child somewhere else to be raised by someone else because of like reincarnation. And so like nobody should feel bad about it or whatever. So hold on. I'm trying to report report these bots. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, so like, you know, where, where there's not really like, there's no consequence for that because it's, you're just kind of sending them off somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've always looked at it. This is, it's so weird. Okay. So obviously, you know, like we have, this is baby number seven coming for us. Well, baby number eight, cause we actually have a baby in heaven, but, um, like that's a lot of kids. There's seven, this will be seven kids living with us. And I'm like, well, Jesus, maybe like possibly we'd have two more kids, but that would, that's nine kids. And then I'm like, well, when do we draw the line? Like, what if I'm able to keep having kids until like friggin' 47? Like, you know, and then, but then when I, when I think about the concept of doing something to even prevent a soul from entering earth, I, I feel very uncomfortable with it. I'm not judging anybody that, that makes those decisions. Obviously we're against abortion, but I, I'm not, I'm not judging anybody in that situation. I'm just talking about how this, the song relates to me personally. Uh -huh. And so it's very, it's crazy to even think that there's another. So for me, I'm like, we have to give all the souls an opportunity to come here and to learn lessons and to be a part of our family and to love them and be loved by them. Like we shouldn't hold the, hold back souls from that. Or what happens to the ones that, you know, that were, but anyway, so that, that's a whole, so it's very weird to think that there's like a flip side of that where people are like, you should not bring children into the world. Yeah. You should not give those souls an opportunity. Like you're, you're well, like again, bad for doing that. They're, they're not looking at it as you're giving the souls an opportunity. They're looking at it like you're locking this, this unconscious being into now a, you've condemned them to a eternity's worth of consciousness that they did not ask for. And, and, you know, they'd have to be conscious for you to be able to ask that question in the first place. Yeah. So I think, you know, antinatalism ultimately cannibalized itself as a philosophy. But I understand the the pinning. Of course, when you look, you know, was, we, we were having our walk in the woods as a family yesterday. And I was talking to, you know, Dorian is interested in, okay, what's the fundamental difference between Cash Trip and Hoffman and, and all mm -hmm. this? and. And I was talking about, well, Hoffman thinks everything is a, you know, an outgrowth of this mind at large. That there's a singular mind at large and you're essentially yeah. uh, one of the billions of altars and including, you know, the universe itself is endogenous, meaning it's, it's uh, imagined. And, um, and that, but the people within it are, are altars from this, this original mind at large. And so none of this stuff is actually here in the ontological sense all that exists in my is mine that's that's idealism whereas hoffman says no the physical uh universe does exist but what we're seeing I mean, we're we're programmed for survival not to see the truth so what we're seeing is a oversimplified uh you know i'll just use simulation as a as a as a he doesn't use that terminology it's a oversimplified simulation that makes it so that you can function within the in the game and the whole point of it is to experience not only other consciousnesses but experience reality experience the universe and in an ever expanding way because the unit in you know in Hoffman's mind it's it's almost infinite especially when you put consciousness on top of that okay so the, so then from that vantage point, then you would obviously, every time a child is born, that is another complex of consciousnesses that decided to come together to experience yeah. people in the world. So you would you would want to have as many kids as possible, I think, in that in that mm -hmm. in that yeah. worldview. Yeah. So my point is there is a way to to refute antinatalism, even from a non theistic you know, perspective on, oh. on from a guy who is I see what you're saying. Uh, from a guy who is very well respected in the field. I mean, he's extremely respected, and I think a lot of that is because he's able to. He's recruited one of the top mathematicians in the world, Ketanya, to be on his team, and I think that gives him a ton of mm -hmm. validation when you can mathematically, mm -hmm. you know, prove the argument. So, 
But for me, in verse 1, like... Okay, so so there's this class of beings called Nephilim in, in, in the Bible, particularly in the intertestamental period. Mm -hmm. And the Nephilim are the children of... Um, gods, essentially, these are Benai Elohim. These are beings who are were given jurisdiction in the in the earth over over certain human beings, and they came down and decided to copulate with the most beautiful women on the earth. And so, does it say the most beautiful? Well, in the Enochian literature, yeah, I mean, it says that they the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair; they were beautiful, and so they took as much as they as they chose. But the point is. Especially in the intertestamental literature, these two get together and they produce basically Hercules. Hercules would be an example of a Nephilim, of a, of a guy who's half divine, half mm -hmm. human uh, type of situation. Very strong. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so g they, they did this and this obviously transgressed some sort of boundary. And so the reason for the flood in the Enochian mindset was, was because of them. It was to cleanse the earth of these half-breed Nephilim who were half-god, half-human. What's fascinating or is... Demigod? Uh, demigods. What's fascinating is when when these angels, these angels get condemned to this pit, Tartarus in, in Second Peter, the, the Greek word is, is Tartarus. And I think it's actually a hapoxogamina in the New Testament. So they're, they're locked up in a very specific place, like the mm -hmm. lowest regions of hell. Mm -hmm. So then Enoch goes down to them and they say, hey, Enoch, listen, go tell God we're very, very sorry, but at least to, uh, you know, spare our children. This is like right before the flood. Go tell God we're very sorry. So Enoch goes up and delivers a message and God goes, are you out of your, this is again, the intertestinal, inter, inter, God says, hell no. As a matter of fact, I'm going to kill your kids in front of you and you'll never see them again. And so then God gives the does the flood and then you know the 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 these a, these rogue angels get to see their ki children die basically and after that happens then those so what happens to those souls because they're not human and they're not completely angelic what happens to them well these beings desire to inhabit a body they become obsessed with inhabiting a physical body why because you know the human side of them is corporeal but then they had a an angelic side to them that is sort of super divine, and so now they're they they have they they become obsessed with wanting to re-inhabit a body, and that theoretically are what you call demons when you see them in the New Testament. So demons are not in this theory; they're not fallen angels. You know, demons are unclean spirits who desire to be reincarnated or rebodified because they were that at the beginning and then their bodies got destroyed in the flood and so that's why they're so obsessed Wait, with being so when part. it says unclean yeah because the nephilim the children that they produced they were you know had not an human, insane not... sexual appetite crazy you oh, know so it corrupt was, it was because of what they did it wasn't because of who they were well it was both i mean they were extremely violent they were can up. They, you know, they ate people, Ouch. and they they were also, yep. you know, very sexually deviant. I didn't know they ate people. And so, and so, yeah, these are, and so the person you see that personality in the New Testament with these demons are called unclean spirits, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so if you if you take that, if you take that, and you look at forgotten ass children of the earth lifeless song from a lifeless choir unavenged ghost begging to return oh. a foreshadow of holy anger silhouettes of wrath divine yeah i am the mouth oh, wow. i am the mouth of divine hunger that ageless thirst for the poison wine the grave is feeding devouring etc 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 it fits perfectly i don't know how much yeah. uh how, much um, how familiar they are yeah I, I don't I don't know how how familiar they are with the intertestamental literature. I'm not I'm not sure. Um, I did think it was interesting when I, they were like, does Job fear God for not? Right. I thought it was because I mean I've heard like sort of like religious stuff brought into right. songs, you know, but but then to bring Job into it and does he fear God for not? Like, I was like, hmm. And right. wow, okay, that's really interesting. 
So that's what you think about the... Ch okay. Which is which is interesting because that's what Satan said when he brought up, bring up killing Job's kids. Mm -hmm. Because the first time it was just afflicting Job with all these sores on his body and all the rest of it. And he maintained his faith. And yeah. God said, see, he maintained his faith. And he goes, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, but let me kill his kids and so we'll see how, see how mm -hmm. it goes. Mm -hmm. So this is also about losing your losing your children. So the the... The Benai Elohim, they lost their kids, and then Job ends up losing his kids, and both of them are inspired by Satan, basically, would be the idea. So, um, wow. it's it's a, it's a fascinating thing. At minimum, what I will say is that uh, there are many credentialed scientists, whatever, that believe in higher dimensions or different mm -hmm. dimensions, four dimensions. I was just watching one on six dimensions, ten dimensions, whatever. Einstein's in a debate with, you know, but like because you, you you've got, you know, uh, you got you've got height width depth height, width depth right, and then you've got time. Yeah. Right. So it's technically you have four dimensions. Yeah. So, one of Einstein's buddies theorized, well, what if there were what if there were five dimensions? So you have. Height, width, length, and time. Yeah. Okay. That's so, right. So, but what if you had a, what if you had four dimensions plus time? That would give you five dimensions. And he basically plugged in um, uh, Einstein's theory, assuming five dimensions, and the the it still worked. Which means, which means, from their view, okay, that means at minimum we have a fifth dimension. Okay, well, if you have credible physicists and mathematicians saying that it's credible that we could have five to ten other dimensions, okay, that would that would mean that they're indiscernible to us as three dimensional time-bound yep. beings and two how, how do you eliminate consciousness operating on those planes it's impossible you can't because consciousness is invisible and non-physical and so if you had a fifth or sixth or tenth dimension that is not accessible by human senses that doesn't mean that it wouldn't be accessible by conscious beings so all I'm saying is I believe in other in higher dimensions where that are not discernible to our regular five senses that there are hostile consciousnesses that occupy those dimensions and can have effect on us in this dimension. And that's a completely scientific understanding of, <laughs> of the world and there's no way you can refute yeah, that at all yeah. because I'm combining Einstein with mm -hmm. Kastrup and other people. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to say scientifically that that as a theory is a non-starter. Now, how those beings came to be hostile and things of that nature, I think I think you do need religion for that. But that uh, template, I don't I, I don't think you can completely you can't dismiss that from a scientific perspective. It's just what we call them. So mm -hmm. an ancient person is going to call them demons. I yeah. call them, you know, malevolent interdimensionals. It's the same same concept. But I actually, mm. oddly enough, I actually enjoyed the song. Um, I really, really, really um, enjoyed the song a lot, actually. Um, so this is a 9.9 .9 for me. 9.9. .9. So for me, like, it... it I expected it to be like, because he said, don't expect any beautiful melodies, but I actually did hear some beautiful melodies in it. So, because... That's true. Yeah, because he set the pace that there was not going to be any. I was like, oh, we're walking into chaos with, with you know, gargoyle <laughs> vocals, and that's it. Um, so, probably without the write-up at the front, it would have got a lower score, but because he put the write-up there and, like, led me in another direction, then I was like, actually, the contrarian in me was like... There is some melody in here, and I like it. So, so you I'm going to give it an 8.6. Uh, it's a 9.8 for me. They they <laughs> did they did a really really good. This is a band. This is a band. I would I would. Uh, this is a song I would listen to again and again and again and again for well, reasons I explained. Speaking of songs very to listen to again, we have Magua Age of Excuse yes! number six next. Yes, which I'm we've rich. already reviewed before. We did it in one of those little, um, you know, where you listen to it and we just give the quick. Yeah, for two seconds. Yep. So he yeah. wants to have a full breakdown. So let's let's uh, put up the commercial and get into it. Yeah. Uh, so there you are, dear listener. Vin out. Sorry, out. Go.